Over the past few decades, the world has changed dramatically. Everything's gotten more complex. It seems like we can't discuss a problem or an issue without also talking about how complex it is. Unfortunately, though, our workplaces still struggle to deal with complexity. What often happens is our workplace develops a solution they believe is correct. When they implement it, they get their desired outcome, but they also get a bunch of new problems and consequences. Today, we call this the law of unintended consequences and tell ourselves that these problems couldn't be foreseen. But that's a lie. The truth is this outcome could have been foreseen and for the most part, prevented. We just didn't know how to see it in advance. Consequently, complexity is the biggest challenge our workplaces face. She's proved herself to be the ultimate workplace bitch. For decades, all kinds of management gurus and experts have been writing books and developing programs telling us how to deal with complexity. And they all have one thing in common. They tell us we need to make a mental shift. We need to think differently. Now I've been through a lot of these programs and I've read a lot of books and my favorite is this one, The Fifth Discipline, because I love the title of the first chapter. Give me a lever long enough, and single-handed, I can move the world. That sums up perfectly the way men think. They believe that the right man with the right expertise and enough determination can conquer any problem and achieve any goal. Well, that's until complexity comes along and ruins things. Oops! Now, if you watch my videos, you know I talk about how our workplaces function in the blue zone. They function through male thinking and male ways of doing things because men designed our workplaces. Consequently, they also designed the methods we use to solve problems. Men taught us that when we have a complex problem, the first step is to break it apart, to fragment it into smaller, more manageable tasks. In our workplace, these smaller tasks are given to different individuals to complete based on their expertise. Of course, men embrace this method because it empowers their blue zone traits of autonomy and task expertise. As women, we're indoctrinated into this blue zone thinking and we're taught that these male methods are the right way and the best way to solve problems. However, because everyone is so entrenched in glorifying the blue zone, we miss what else happens. When we fragment complex things, we lose our perspective on how the pieces are connected, how they fit together to create the whole. Even worse, autonomy allows men to see their task as a standalone activity and as an opportunity to show off their expertise. So they do their task the way they think it should be done. Consequently, when we bring all of the individual tasks back together, they don't fit or function correctly. Throughout my career, this was a huge problem. It killed productivity. It created a lot of rework and wasted a lot of time and money. Our workplaces knew that in order to increase productivity, they had to limit autonomy. However, men resisted any restrictions to their autonomy. So our workplaces developed a new solution, technology. Technology forces us to do our work one way. By adding technology and limiting autonomy, men believed they simplified the workplace and that simplification was the key to conquering complexity. But complexity knew better. She knew that technology only made her more powerful and an even bigger workplace bitch. Now we've all had the experience where technology forces us to do our work in a way that doesn't align with what we're trying to accomplish. And when these problems pop up, they're really hard to get fixed because it seems like no one wants to be responsible for fixing them. No one wants to dive down into the details of the problem and understand what's wrong. Well, that's because the blue zone doesn't like details. It just wants to get things done. But in complex situations, close enough is not good enough. Complexity finds tremendous power in the details. She knows one small error in a detail gives her the power to stop work or to create havoc and chaos. 
And she also knows that as long as our workplaces are unwilling or unable to effectively deal with the details, she'll keep her power. Now we've all heard the expression, you can't see the forest through the trees. This blue zone expression warns us, don't get fixated on the details. We're told, don't focus on the thousands of trees, bugs, plants, and animals, or how they all interact, because all those details are too complex and overwhelming. Instead, we're told to simplify and pull back our perspective until it's large enough to see just one forest. Of course, we can't live in a world that ignores the details, and that's the problem with the Blue Zone's problem-solving methods. It makes us decide between two bad options. The first is to fragment into the details, categorize and organize them, then assign an individual expert to each detail. By using this process, we lose the connections between the details and how they interact and rely on each other to create the whole. Our second option is to simplify and look at the whole without any details. Neither of these options make complexity happy because she knows they can have devastating results. Complexity demands that we see the big picture and the details all at the same time. She demands we see the trees, bugs, plants, and animals, and how they are all connected to each other to create the whole forest. So how do we do that? Well, according to all the gurus and experts, we need to make a mental shift. Okay, but where are we shifting to? Well, in one of my classes, they told us we needed to make a shift to a cooperative team approach. Okay, that sounds good, but what does it mean? You know what? They never told us. The other answer we get a lot is that we need to make a shift to systems thinking. And again, okay, but what does that mean and how does that work? Well, again, that's why I like this book. Because without realizing it, Peter Senge spends the first four chapters explaining why the Blue Zone is incapable of conquering complexity. And then beginning in Chapter 5, he spends a lot of pages teaching men, and let's be honest, this book was written for men, he teaches them the new way to think. He tells them to stop focusing on the fragmented parts, but to think instead about the connections and interrelationships between the parts. He tells them to stop seeing linear cause and effect and to see circles of causality instead. He tells them to stop expecting facts to lead to precise actions, but to think more abstractly. And to give up trying to control everything. Instead, accept and adapt to how things are. So in the end, we don't just get things done, we get them done well. When we make the mental shift to focus on the connections, we aren't overwhelmed by the number of details because the connections and relationships become our guide. They map out how our action will affect every detail so we can then design an action that minimizes the negative impacts and maximizes the positive outcomes. Now with all of this talk about connections and relationships that's been going on for decades, Am I the only one that's picking up on the fact that he's trying to teach men to think like women? And that he's telling our workplaces they need to adopt what I call pink zone traits. These are the traits that come from the way women think and act in the workplace. Of course, it's hard to tell that we need to make a mental shift to female traits because he and all the other gurus and experts describe our traits using a bunch of scientific and technical jargon, which we automatically associate with blue zone thinking. Men are so entrenched in their belief that their blue zone is the whole of great thinking and action that they assume this mental shift had to happen within the blue zone. They didn't even consider shifting to women's pink zone traits because they assumed our traits are inferior. And this is what pisses off complexity. It's why she goes off on wild rampages against men, slamming them with new consequences and problems. She'll wreak havoc and chaos until they understand that they aren't supermen. 
She, however, is the biggest badass hardcore feminist the world has ever known. And it's her job to drill it into men that they are only one half of the whole and women are the equal other half. God, I love complexity. Because whenever the guys refused to listen to me because they were the guys, I learned I didn't have to get mad. I could just sit back and watch complexity go kick their asses until they came crawling back asking for my help. Complexity helped and supported me far more in my career than any management book or program. And as far as I'm concerned, this book, the last chapter, should be chapter five. And it should simply say, hire more women, value and appreciate the way women think, Listen to what women tell you to do because they will keep you out of trouble. Complexity is the ultimate workplace bitch, but the truth is she doesn't want to be. She wants to be a team player because as I learn, when we work with her correctly, that's when we accomplish great things. Complexity just demands that our working relationships be based on the full equality of men and women in the workplace that men and women work together and influence each other so we create harmony, balance, and wholeness. This is how we complete that elusive mental shift so we work with a cooperative team approach and use the power of systems thinking. This is Dot Callahan and my friend Complexity asking you to help us turn the woman in the room into the women in the room. Sign up for my newsletter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or follow The Woman in the Room on social media. It's up to you. Just keep watching and sharing my videos to get advice from a woman who's been there, dealt with that, and knows what works.